I'm Richard from In The Box Productions and I'm here to talk about my fantastic brand new YouTube channel. Yes, another one. And we'll be talking about how to produce music. Yes, I know, another one as well. But anyway, what I will be doing is showing you how to take a song from A to Z, produce it, record vocals, uh, how to make drums, bass parts, keyboard parts, guitars, using Apple loops from, 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 from Logic Pro X and loads of other techniques like recording, I don't know, sampling a, what we call sampling this recording, uh, a uh, fridge in a supermarket. Or recording an old lady shouting at her phone. <laughs> or even my granddaughter singing in a microphone she got from Santa Claus. And incorporating them into uh, a song, you know, in Logic. So, yeah, let's try and have some fun doing this at the same time. But I hope to be making some, like, funky tracks. When you're shaking down the dance floor, Techno tracks. Some house tracks. So we'll see how, how that develops, but I might be doing several different series uh, in the future on different programs, so we'll see how that goes. So if you want to stay up to date, like and subscribe, and uh, I should be back with uh, more information soon, and tutorials uh, regarding what I just talked about just now, coming up in the future. Hopefully, well, should be. Bye. Let's start by downloading Logic from the App Store, then install it. Once it's installed, you'll be asked to download Logic content. This is samples for the synthesizers and the Apple Loop library. Uh, I'll be going over that later on, and you'll understand why it's very important to download all that stuff. It's quite a big download, so it's going to take a few hours to download it. Depends how fast your connection is. I would leave it overnight. So once you have Logic installed and you start it up, this window will come up. We'll be given the choice of projects, so we'll choose Empty Project, and then this will come up and we'll be asked to import some tracks. Best to start with a synth or an audio track. Uh, let's put in, say, 10 tracks for now. Put some audio tracks in. And then you come over here, you see this little cross. This will bring up the window again. And so we can then bring up a software instrument and I can show you what that looks like as well. Now up the top here, we have all these icons that access different windows. This is very useful here. If you turn this on and slide it over something, it will tell you what it does. And this is the stop, this is the record button, the cycle. You just slide it over something and it, it, it just explains what the function does. Very useful. I'll turn it off for now, otherwise it'll be lighting up all over the place. So here we have the mixing desk, which comes up below. On the left hand side, when we click on this, this opens up and we've got access to the information of each track. So if I bring down all these faders here, you can see when I open up the mixing desk, they're all matching. And here you'll see that the information on the side here corresponds to each track here. Like this is track number one, audio number two, and uh, when we close this down, you still have access to all the information for each track when you click on it. So let's have a look at what a real recording studio looks like. Back in the day, we used to record each instrument to its own track on a multi-track recorder that looks like this. The standard was 24 tracks or 48. They used to link together two machines and then they were able to record each element separately and then mix them together 
what we call mixing. And here they've done the same thing by recreating a recording studio in this program, which is called a DAW or Digital Audio Workshop. So in the arrange window, when we start recording, it, the recording will come across here as tape, like this here, across your timeline. So when I say tape, let me show you something that will explain that a bit better. So let's go to Apple Loops and look for a drum loop. Go into Deep House, maybe. Click here, Deep House, and then... So when I drag this in, it's going to ask me if I want to import the tempo information of the loop or keep the original tempo of the session itself. I'm not going to import it because I want to keep the original tempo, which is 118. We will be looking closer at the tempo functions here because there's been a serious update with 10.4.1. Here, I like to have custom view. So then I can see the uh, time, uh, the bars, the tempo, the locator positions, also the time signature and the grid resolution, very useful information here. And of course, the hard drive and CPU activity of the computer itself. And here you can see the threads and the hard drive readout. So now I've got this beat in here. Let's uh, pull this across. Now by holding down out and dragging and dropping the loop across, you can just quite easily make up a 16 bar sequence. And this is what I was talking about. It looks like tape going across your timeline. And then you can edit that any way you want to by just putting it around and editing it and all sorts of things you can do to this. So like I said, this looks like a piece of tape playing down the timeline. Uh, what I wanted to explain to you earlier on is that in theory, this program is very similar to a real recording studio. Here you have your tape machine, of course, where all the, all the tape goes across. Uh, here we have the uh, mixing desk and the slots where we insert the plugins, uh, very similar to what you have in a real recording studio where you have a patch bay with cables and they physically plug in effects into the channel strip and here on our channel strip we have a drop down menu so when you click on it it opens up a menu of plugins that we can insert into the channel strip like here i will put a compressor in just to show you how that that works and uh, we'll be talking about compression later uh, don't worry it looks complicated but you'll start to get a grasp of this uh, as we move forward so let's um, move on and decide what we're going to do I forgot to mention earlier that when you are installing Logic and it asks you to download the content, you can still work in Logic whilst it's downloading. You just won't have all the samples and all the content that downloads. But even if you shut down Logic and come back, it will continue to download. So there's no worries there. So if you want to see where you are with your downloads, you can go to the Sound Library, Open Sound Library Manager, and then you've got the manager that shows you where you are with your downloads so here you can see studio horns are incomplete so let's continue on with the download of studio horns and up here you've got a blue line if you click on that you've got a drop down menu that gives you the information about where you are with your downloads here you can see you've got 1.5 giga 35 37 minutes and uh, you can still continue working whilst that downloads in the background so now what I'm going to do is import a track that I did not so long ago and that I'm using in the intro of this YouTube channel. And I'm going to use that as a reference track as well. So let's start by getting rid of these drums that I put in. We don't need these anymore. Get rid of these tracks and so we can start from scratch. So now if we go over here in the corner uh, and press on the file browser, that will open up a window where we can find all our hard drives and here you can see we've got access direct to different hard drives through here and so here I've got my YouTube folder with samples and other things in there already open so what I'm going to do now is import my Oppo Lolo demo track that we can hear at the moment uh, there's a couple of things I want to talk about before I import this track. So over here, we have a few 
tempo functions that are pretty useful. So if we click on keep, this will open up a drop down menu for the smart tempo project settings. Then we can go into here and click on on, turn that on. So that will now import this track here to this tempo. So this is 124. And if I drop this in here, it will become 118. Now I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is keep this off and then that will keep my tempo at 24 when I bring that in. So what I'm going to do now is set the project's tempo to 124. So that's our main tempo and then drag and drop this in. Then it'll ask us if we want to import the tempo information. We don't import because we know it's already at 124 BPM. So here we have something that's pretty useful for when you're importing tracks from an external, an external library that's not Apple Loops. So it won't automatically sync to the tempo. So if we go into metering, then BPM counter, uh, this will give us the tempo of the track. Okay, we can see that's 124, no problems there. Uh, now let's think about mapping out this track. But first of all, when you import a track from another DAW, sometimes there's latency issues. So let's uh, close this down for now. And over here in the corner, you can see we've got these sliders here. If you just drag them to one side or the other, this will make the waveform bigger or smaller. And then we can zoom in and see exactly what kind of latency problem we got and uh, make sure that we sync it. So what I want to do here is make sure that my kick is on a beat. I want to be my beat is actually on a, it's on the grid. So if I move this back a bit, I could be able to move the kick. So it actually is synced with my grid, like on a, on the beginning of a bar. So that the kick drum will be like on the one. Now, if we zoom in even further like this with our little cursor there, and then we can microscope it and see really deep in that it's on the beat. So there's no problems there. Great stuff. And we can check this with the metronome, as you can hear, ticking away here. And this is where we activate or disactivate the metronome. Very useful when you haven't got drums in your track. So that's all good. Uh, in my next video, we're going to obviously map this out and divide it and give the sections colors and names and start adding beats and bass lines and samples and uh, generally building the track. So if you enjoyed the video, subscribe, like, and leave some comments. See you soon.